Hello, it is Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle today, so should be a fairly approachable themed puzzle. And um, this fairly approachable themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Victoria Rajishka, David Connell, and as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. I do very much appreciate that. It helps keep this whole enterprise sustainable for me, which I very much appreciate. And if you'd like to join their ranks, either as a benefactor, like those four mentioned uh, up front, and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, or if you'd like to join at any other level and still get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, and the new ones that go up each week, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And last night I recorded um, the most recent New York Times acrostic puzzle, which I've, I've not done in a while. I realized it had been some time since I solved an acrostic puzzle. So I did that for the Patreon feed. That should be up uh, today. So look out for that. Maybe even by the time this video is posted, I'm not sure. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, right. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a rocky solve, as is often the case for me with the acrostic. It took me a while to break in. And then once you reach a sort of critical mass with the acrostic, you can really start solving the rest of it very quickly. But, uh, but boy, it took me some time to, to gain a foothold on that one. Anyway, enjoy if you're a patron. And what else? Um, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, the chat community, uh, with the link in the description field underneath the video as well. Patrons get an extra channel in there. And you can join the channel, well, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, that is, for free. Thank you to everybody who's done that. Very much appreciate it. And that's that. So let's solve the Tuesday puzzle. This, uh, I've realized I forgot to look up the constructor before um, starting this, but in any case, this is a Tuesday puzzle constructed by Richard D. Allen and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, um, oh, this is a debut puzzle. This is a debut puzzle today, Richard D. Allen. So, so that's that. Okay. And uh, what else is there to say? Nothing. Let's, let's play the puzzle. Kids and their parents. Family, kin, um, goats. We had goats. Oh, actually, goats were mentioned in the cross in the acrostic, and also uh, referred to in yesterday's puzzle. But I think I mistook them for sheep, which is a subject of the um, in one of the yesterday's clues today. Later, anyway. Yaks could be to gabs, to sort of speak at length. Twistable snack item, an Oreo. Here we go. I feel as though we had a bit of a reprieve from the um, prevalence of Oreo as a, as a clue in the New York Times crossword for several months there. And I do think it's come back and we're getting our, our new clues because if you don't, if you don't know, I've mentioned this before, but if you're new to the channel, um, Oreo over the many, many years of the New York Times crossword became such a common clue that the New York Times mandated if Oreo is to be used, sorry, not as a clue, as an answer, if Oreo is to be used as an answer in the crossword, it must have a, it must have a unique clue that has not yet been used. So twistable snack item, presumably, is a unique, not, not previously used clue for Oreo. Nickname for Schwarzenegger or Palmer, Arnie, Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger or Arnold Palmer, aka Arnie. If you do something from the top, you do it anew. And first man in Polynesian creation myth. Well, I'm not sure offhand. If something is observed, it is seen. And oh, my spacebar is not working. I don't think my settings are correct. I seem to have lost all of my New York Times settings. I lost my Wordle um, stats yesterday as well. So let's see. I like spacebar to toggle between across and down not to advance. Okay. Uh, there's a little tip, by the way, you can change some of these keyboard settings. If you solve the, um, if you solve on the browser, anyway, if something is observed. It is seen an early season farming task would be sowing your seeds. Oh, Tiki is the first man in Polynesian creation myth. That's right. And hive minders are beekeepers. 
Okay, so beekeepers presumably is going to be our theme. Once you solve enough of these puzzles, and you start to recognize where the theme clues go, and I think this is one of them. Blank trip and ego trip looks like the answer. Words before the stars are brightly shining in a carol. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. Um, there we go. Okay, well, I don't know what that is. Maybe B and O. So we have let, perhaps letters of the alphabet, beekeepers, oh, holy night. Maybe that in itself will spell something, B-O, etc. D-weeder, a hoe in a garden, D-weeder, that kind of thing. Oops. Um, rock blaster, uh, rock music blaster could be an amp, an amplifier. And to help with a job in a way could be to abet, maybe to help with a bank job, to help with a robbery, abetting a criminal. And ta-ta would be by now, I think. And we'll, um, with this kind of exclamation, often phrases like this, exclamatory phrases, will match the tone between the clue and the answer. So the, the clue, ta-ta, has that kind of casual um, chipper ring to it, and so does the phrase by now. So they match. Prepares to get schooled, in a, perhaps, enrolls in school. Yumilicious, tasty. And here we have a winged chatterbox, a mina, a mina bird. And C for one is a note, a musical note. Swamps. Engulf, something like that. It's, I don't think it's going to be engulfs, but something of that nature, I think. Grind as one's teeth. Gnash one's teeth, perhaps. I remember reading a <laughs> once an attempt to try and determine what it meant the biblical phrase, the wailing and gnashing of teeth, what exactly that that meant. Because it's not a thing people do usually out of sort of active despair. Um, anyway, something, uh, I mean, it might not be the answer, but we'll have to see. Uh, something book club, I'm not sure. Oh, Oprah's book club, probably, because it's capitalized. So it's referring to a um, something that is established, a proper noun. And Oprah's Book Club is a very influential book club. Wanted but nowhere to be found. A wall, a way without leave in military terminology. Okay, to not just sit around daydreaming is to act. And then 11 is to just sit around daydreaming, in fact. Um, to just sit around daydreaming. Not sure. What about this? To deal with something is to cope with it. If you're having trouble deciding, you're torn. And video chat description is lag. Ah, yardstick. Oh, I think we saw this clue. Yardstick measurement is length. And so to just... Oh, right. To just sit around daydreaming is to wool, uh, uh, wool gather, right? Wool gathering. Is that right? I think so. Many a Hollywood car crash would be a stunt. And a West Coast burger chain, West Coast of the United States, in and out. In and out a, um, actually, I think quite a good <laughs> hamburger fast food chain in, on the West Coast of the U.S. And maybe this is engulfs after all. If something swamps you with work, it engulfs you, is it? I suppose that must be right. I was really confident it wasn't going to be, but anyway. Some South Pacific greetings are alohas. And Amy, who wrote The Joy Luck Club, is Amy Tan, the novelist. Literally on fire, or metaphorically, excellent. On fuego? I don't think I'm familiar with that being used to mean excellent. But I suppose it must be. Uh, bouncer's concern at a bar or nightclub would be age. A female hog would be a sow. And to scatter as flower petals would be to strew them. All right. 911 responder is an EMS, a medical, no, EMT, emergency medical technician. I guess EMS is emergency medical services. I guess it could be either of those technically. Maybe I'll leave that blank for now. Lip, the lip of a, I don't know, a glass could be its rim. And... In and of itself. Let's see. Ride roughshod over trample, I suppose. 
Let's check these crosses to make sure that's correct. Palindromic Fashion Magazine would be L Magazine. There we go. It's a palindrome. So it reads the same in either direction. And ones calling offsides would be refs in football, soccer. Uh, I don't know, maybe other sports as well. I'm not sure. Les Mis, Les Miserables, the musical. And, well, I suppose the book from which it derives, but I think this, this nickname refers specifically to the musical. Means of tagging in a game. A oh, laser tag, I suspect this is. Oh, and here's our revealer, entranced, or what one can do by reading the starts of 17, 24, 33, 44, and 50 across in order. Right. I think, yes, okay, I think my suspicion was correct. So we are going to be spelling something homophonically with the beginning of these words. So B O, let's see, B O something N and Fuego something. Entranced. I bet this will start with D. Um, ah, that's annoying. Why can't I think of it? Second most visited website worldwide after Google. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Um, what would that be? I mean, Google is the obvious first choice. What would the second one be? Oh, I don't know. Cries of dismay, something with an ends with an S. So as not to stand out subtly. Sweet Jane songwriter Reed, Lou Reed, and intended part of an outline. Intended part of an outline. Um, I don't know. Blank Rima, eight line stanza. Eight line. Does it start with oct something? Invalidate. Let's, let's look at this. Loot. Oh, no. <laughs> Not going to help. Loot blank. Longtime Arizona basketball coach. I have no idea. Loot. Elton. I don't know. I have no idea. Skull in Saturn. Saturn's. Oh, this is um, a toast. Um... School affiliated with the Latter-day Saints. Oh, Latter-day Saints are uh, the Mormons. So Brigham Young University is a, a Mormon university in Utah. Mm. Oh, oh, I see. Salut. We're looking for we're looking for another sort of toasting equivalent. There we have it. Salut. All right. And then, I don't know what this is. Is this going to be in Italian? I'm not really sure. Maybe I should delete this. What about this? Invalidate, nullify. And, oh, YouTube is the, oh, you should have guessed that. It's the website you are on right now. The second most visited website worldwide after Google. So, all right, so that should give us this, right? Um, hmm. B O Y N. What? Oh, no, U is, sorry, U, the letter U, not the letter Y. B O U N. Bound. Oh, entranced. But no wonder I didn't see that. Uh, you're, you're bound, you're wrapped, you're entranced. So this will be D. And what was that? I don't think we've looked at the clue yet. Drink that comes with a buzz cut. What? Um, boy, I'm not good at getting these ahead of time, am I? Um, let's check the crosses. QB's six-pointer. So this it will start with a D because it'll either be the letter D or it'll be homophonically a D spelled like that. Um, in any case, QB six pointer, quarterback six pointer. It must be a touchdown, a T, no, no. TD something, touchdown something. 
What about this? Three coins fountain location, the uh, Trevi fountain, Rome. Oh, Ottavi Rima, maybe? That looks plausible. Drink that comes with a buzz cut. A buzz cut. Is it something, a non-alcoholic drink or a sort of hangover cure or something? Oh, decaf latte. Ah, less of a buzz. Right. Less caffeine. Decaf latte. Okay, so Atava Rima is the eight-line stanza. Okay. And then, what is this? Indented part of an outline. A subsection. Aha. Yeah, so this looks like Olson. And cries of dismays are always, I suppose. And Lute Olson, longtime Arizona basketball coach. I assume that's correct. Gently touch either forward or backward. Um, in actuality, really? And pat, gently touch pat. Either forward or, oh, I see. <laughs> Reading the word in either direction. So pat, you can pat something or tap it. And either of those could mean to gently touch. Very clever. Okay. Et Ali uh, and others. Um, and a neatniks opposite would be a slob. And to line things up is to sync them, to synchronize. And so our QB six pointer is a TD pass, a touchdown pass. Okay, that makes sense. And then let's look at this cross here American Idol error starting in 2018, ABC. Okay. Sounds plausible enough. American Idol must air on the ABC network. Um, oh, right. So entranced, or what one can do by reading the starts of these clues in order. Uh, if you're bound, you're entranced, you are spell bound. Oh, I see. Spell bound. Spell the word bound. Right. Sorry. I sort of read this and then didn't really, uh, didn't really take it into account. So what you can do, so it doesn't say... Sorry, it doesn't say entranced or what is spelled by the beginning of these words. It says entranced or what you can do by reading the starts of these words, which is to spell the word bound. And spell bound is much more entranced, is much closer in meaning to entranced than just bound on its own. I thought that was a little bit odd, but it's because I didn't read the instructions properly. So we've spelled bound. We're spell bound. Very good. Okay, class offered at many YMCAs. I think English as a second language, ESL. And to frustrate is to stymie. I don't know if that's going to be correct. This TB looks odd. I know, it's fine. Baking measures are tablespoons. And that's your business. Workhorse that's only part horse is a mule, which is a, a crossbreed. And uh, tattoo shop supplies are inks, tattoo ink. Ice cream brand is Edie's. And there we have it. We didn't see this. Garlic squeezer, a garlic press, and we didn't see this. If one is petulant, one is sulky. So there we go. I probably still missed some crosses somewhere because I seem to do that often, but tried to get most of them. Anyway, there is our puzzle today. Very good. We've, we've reviewed it a few times at this point due to my mistake, but we'll look at it one more time. So we've spelled uh, Beekeepers, Oh Holy Night, YouTube, on Fuego and Decaf Latte. What, a, what a, an amazing collection of words. They almost couldn't be less related to one another than these. Um, and we've, spe we've through them, spelled B-O-U-N-D to make bound. So we are spell bound, and that is what we do. We spell bound. Okay, uh, a good, a nice debut puzzle by Richard D. Allen, and I would say maybe a shade more difficult than a typical Tuesday. Um, that was my my reaction, but of course, uh, that is going to differ greatly from person to person. So let me know how you fared with that one. And I'm going to move on to, I'm going to move on to some clues from yesterday's puzzle. I think we only had two, in fact. And um, one of them was just an interesting fact. One of them was a correction. Uh, but I included it because we were short on clues. So, um, Aldfooter says, Aldfooter says, cashmere and angora fibers come from goats, I think, not sheep. 
And you are, of course, correct. In my haste to solve yesterday's puzzle as quickly as possible, I confused uh, those wools as coming from sheep, but, in, but of course they come from uh, the Kashmir goat, which I think has another name that I can't recall, and the, the Angora goat, not from sheep. So thank you for that. And Brian D., regarding 61A, ozone, says... I learned an alarming fact recently. How thick do you suppose the ozone is? You know, the layer of gas that deflects the most harmful of the sun's radiation, making life on Earth possible. Three millimeters. That's it. That is quite an astonishing fact. So thank you, Brian D. That is sort of um, surreal to imagine. But, uh, anyway, there we have it. That was today. Oops, that was today's puzzle, the Tuesday puzzle, and some clues from yesterday's. And that means that's it for today's video. So thank you so much for joining me um, once again. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Wednesday puzzle. We might take a little a little step up in difficulty then. I hope you join me. It'll be another themed puzzle. And until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.